Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I will walk you through the process of setting up your Android project so your app can receive push notifications. The process is rather lengthy. There are a lot of steps and all of them are equally important. If you miss one, the odds are push notifications will not arrive. So rather than going through each and every step, which is described in our documentation, and I'll let me just show you where in the docs you can find them. So if you go to backendless documentation and then uh, in the push notifications section, you will see push notifications set up for Android. So there are plenty of steps here and you need to go through them all in order to get to the point where your device will register with Backendless to receive push notifications. But what I'm going to do is I have set up a uh, just a blank Android project and I configured everything and it runs and I can register device in Backendless. And I will go through each and every part of the configuration to point out what needs to be done, where the configuration goes. Also, whenever you run your project and uh, uh, the very first thing to verify that it works is you should see device registration in Backendless. And to, to, to do this, you would need to go to the data screen. And then there is a table called device registration. Right now I have no devices. This is just a literally brand new app with some data in there. But uh, let me do this first. So this is, this is my Android Studio project. And uh, let me just run it and uh, bring up the emulator right here. Uh, so here's the emulator. You see this little uh, uh, pop-up that says device registered. And all it does, it really just registers for push notifications. And then in here, in Backendless Console, uh, under device registrations, let me refresh that view, I do have this one device that has registered. And this is my emulator. So this is kind of the proof that this project works. But uh, let me go back to the project. And as I said, I will point out each and every a uh, little thing that is required to configure uh, Android uh, Studio project for push notifications. So number one, you will need to have Google Services JSON. And this will come from your Firebase project that you configured and our documentation talks about it. So make sure to bring it in and it needs to be, it needs to sit in the app folder uh, of your project. Number two, if you open Build Gradle under app, couple of things that need to happen here. First of all, this comes from uh, Google Instructions, so this uh, plugin right here. Uh, additionally, uh, the analytics comes from Google Instructions. These two lines, these dependencies, they are required for cloud messaging. They come from our documentation. Google doesn't really mention that, uh, at least in the basic setup instructions, so you need to make sure that this is, this is in place. Uh, backendless dependency. It's a must. Whenever you work with backendless, you need to have this dependency in place. And the socket IO dependency, it is needed whenever you work with backendless and you want to have real-time database uh, or real-time messaging, then this dependency also must be in here. So this is uh, this goes for build Gradle under app. Uh, let's take a look at build Gradle at the project level. So here's the build Gradle. Uh, this comes from Google Instructions. Uh, the Google repository and Google repository right here also come from Google instructions. So this is, uh, it doesn't look like a lot, but you know, since the, 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 the configuration is just in multiple places, it could become uh, something that very easily you can miss one and things just will not work. Uh, additionally, if you go under app and then SRC, you will see, uh, and then main, you will see your Android manifest.xml. Extremely important. So in here, you need to add the internet permission because your, your application will be communicating via the internet. It needs to have internet permission. And then you need to register your uh, backendless FCM service, uh, service, which is responsible for really processing push notifications when they arrive to your application. So. If you added this and then somehow this appears in red and Android Studio doesn't recognize, what this mean, means is that in build Gradle at the app level, this dependency is missing. So it means that backendless is not there. But once you have backendless in place, then Android manifest, everything should just look green. 
So that's what it takes from the configuration perspective. Now let's take a look at the code. So from the code perspective, I do have here's main activity. So number one, of course, backanalyst.init app. Make sure to pass your context, application ID, and, a and Android API key. And then this uh, code right here, what it does is we create a collection of channels. There is one channel, which is default, that we will be registering this device with. Notice this is the line of code, backanalyst.messaging.register device. We pass in the collection of channels, and then there is a callback. And in the callback, there are two, two methods. One is executed if the registration is successful, and the other one will be re executed if the registration is not successful. So here you will see uh, what the actual error might be. Uh, that's all it takes. Once this code is executed, and if it is successful, that means your device is ready to receive push notifications. And if it is successful, you will also see your device in the device registration table right here. That's all it really takes. Uh, but I know it could sound like a lot because it is a lot. But uh, if you follow the documentation, it is all right here, push notification set up for Android. It talks about each and every little thing that is needed. Uh, additionally, whenever you go through the setup, make sure to go through client setup. And the client setup does talk about adding uh, backhandlers and configuring and then uh, making the call to init app and adding the internet. You see all those little things that I pointed out, they are documented under client setup because this is a general setup needed for backhandlers. I hope you found this useful. And uh, if something is still not working, Make sure to go through the documentation and check off every single step that, uh, that, it, that it includes. Thank you, and uh, as always, happy coding.